I feel like I never do any planned chore videos with you guys. And this morning I'm just gonna make some moss pulls so then I kind of figure I will just like film um, in chunks and then put a video together. And yeah, because usually I find some time, I sit down and then I make the video. Um, but I like watching fun chore videos, so um, I think I will make an effort to compile something together for you guys. Um, and I haven't, I've, I've been meaning to make some extra moss pulls because this year my, one of my new year's resolution is to grow my, to grow my children's better. So I think making a moss pole is, am I making so much noise? Making a moss pole is um, part of that commitment. So I got these, I'll put the link in the description box, but I got these, um, this grid that you have seen actually in my moss wall. Um, and I use that to make my moss poles. I'm going to make two today. One for mm -hmm. my beautiful Florida beauty. I have this little pole for it, but I'm finding it really hard to keep it moist. Uh, and then I'm seeing like this new, le this new leaf that's emerging has a little bit of area root and I kind of want to encourage the area root to root inside the moss pool. Okay, so, and then I have this melanochrysum. I'm actually <laughs> um, isolating this one because I found some thrips on it um, a few days ago, a week ago. Um, but, so I'm gonna be careful not to put it too close to my Philodendron Beauty. So maybe I'll just work on the Florida Beauty first and then I'll work on the uh, melanochrysum. I will cut the cut this to the length that I need for the Florida Beauty. Voila. So th this is how much I've cut because I'm going to put a little bit in the soil. So I, I have cut it a little bit longer than what the plant would need. So when I put it in, I don't put it I don't need to put the moss on the very bottom of the moss hole because that's just going to be like a part that's in the soil to like secure the moss pool. So I don't need to waste speck the moss. I find that um, I have to wet the moss pole pretty frequently, like at the very least once a week because they dry up super quickly. But because it is my commitment this year to grow my philodendrons better i i have been like it's okay that i have to do that i am willing to put in the work i am not sure like how packed it needs to be mm, i don't want to waste too much sphagnum moss so i just kind of not not super tight i loosely pack it there you go so now that it's got sphagnum moss in it then i just take out my zip tie and then I fold it in, maybe like one square in. So it's like overlap a little bit, so it's more secure. And then I will zip tie the middle first to keep it together, easier to work with. There you go. So this is only just like with three. So then I'm going to add maybe like a couple more. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. There you go. So like those are, that's how many zip tie I would use for, for this moss pole and just like holds it together pretty sufficiently. And voila, is made and then you just can kind of shape it to the round size. But you have to be a little bit careful because where you cut, where I cut with the grid, this is a little bit sharp. 
You could bend that in, but I am not so fussy about that. Because I already had a uh, moss pole in there before, so there's a space that was already made for the um, moss pole. Um, so it was re really easy to just put it in. And then I will like use a plan tape to secure the stem to the moss pole. So then, oh, this is not long enough. So then like, so then the stem and the moss pole has like maximum like contact. So this guy is done. You can trim the, like these bits off of the moss pole so it looks better, but that's what it looks like now. And I put it back into the Mills bowl cabinet. So I think I'm going to dump out the soil a little bit. Especially like where I want the moss pole to be in. Um, and then you guys see. And then I will poke it. So the bottom of the moss pole is a little bit sharp, so it kind of like pokes itself a little bit. Then I will put this soil back in. And sometimes if I find that it still is not very secure, then I will add like some more sphagnum moss at the base and just like tuck it around the base of the moss pole. So it's really like snug in there, it doesn't move around. There's some juicy area roots right around here. So I'm going to tie around where there's juicy area roots. So I really like to buy oxalis seeds and grow them myself. You guys know I really, really love this one. Um, so I bought two more. I don't remember what the what they look like. So I'm just going to pot these. But I also want to give this a bigger pot. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I got this really cute pot from my friend Maya. And I'm going to put them in here. Um, and then I think I'm just going to line the bottom with some pond so it's not like too much of an upgrade like added um, soil and then let's see how easy it is to just pop these guys out Ooh, looks pretty good So they look a little bit messy now, but um, I'm pretty sure to, by tomorrow they will be standing up. Maybe I'll put a picture um, for you guys for what they look like tomorrow. And now I'm going to plant the other ones. Let's just see what happens. This is um, horticulture charcoal. Horticulture, charcoal, <laughs> soil. I am just mixing stuff in there to make it like a chunkier mix. This is just some pond. I'm, I'm just gonna toss it in. A generous amount of warm casting in here. 
and then some green sand. So I mentioned it in my philodendron video that I want to uh, pot my this um, philodendron uh, 69686 together and then give it a moss pole. So that's what I am going to do right now. I'm actually giving it a pretty like generous pot size because ooh, there's some roots coming out here. Because I've learned this from my friend Juvie, she really like was saying that, uh, whoops, took some roots out, uh, but that's okay. She says that the bigger the pot, the, the bigger the leaf size could grow into. And I kind of agree with her on that one. Um, so there's quite a bit of sphagnum moss here that I think I'm just going to tease out. I will use that sphagnum moss for a little moss pole that I'm going to build for it. And being a little bit um, kind of rough with it. Less roots than I, I thought it would have, but that's okay. So I think I'm going to face them this way. Put some more soil in there. I'm going to do this um, thing that I learned from um, um, Planned Parenthood. I'm just going to do like a like a half moss pole so I don't fill this with moss all the way up. I just um, give it moss where it needs moss. So it looks kind of like this. What I do is, this is just the moss that I took from the pot before. Like I fill it in here. I think I'll just do it just a little bit like up until around here. And um, because this plant, I'm looking at where the aerial roots are and I try to tuck it in together. And then I will just kind of hug them together. So it kind of just looks like this. Maybe I'll do another one to enforce the top a little bit just to keep everything together so the moss doesn't fall out. Whoops. I don't think I cut the, there we go. This is what it looks like now. How secure is this? Um, so like I mentioned before, if I feel like this is too wonky, then I will just put a little bit more sphagnum moss at the base to make it tighter. I am going to give it just a little bit of a drink and not saturate it too much because there's really not so much um, roots for such a, uh, such a big pot. I'm just trying it out. There you go. All these guys are kind of pulled up. So I got some new plants. Um, I'm going to pot these marantas together and then repot these, this Hoya linearis that my friend found for me from Canadian Tire and I'm going to put it in a hanging place. Oh, there's yeah, a new stem coming out. Do you think I should repot this? I never trust the soil that it comes in with. So I think I'm going to gently disturb it and shake it off a little bit. And should I? I don't know. I'm a little bit worried because it seems to be pretty happy right now. Um, and then, so I won't deal with this guy just yet, uh, this diatom fern, because I want to find a cork a bar tile to mounted to for these three lemon lime momentos i think i'm going to pot them together i love this one so much mine i think i underwatered it a little bit so i want to have a new one um yeah i just love these prayer plants so much and i always want to have some in my home so about that linen there is oh wow, so hard to say should I repot this oh, see like it's got multiple new growth points here too like it can you guys see there's new growth point here and, and a new growth point here um oh a little baby yeah lots of new growth points Wow, look at those roots. Hmm. Okay, well, 
that soil gonna fall super easily off anyways so I'm just gonna mix it with my like little bit more like more coarse stuff in here and then put it in little bit of water to settle it in, but not too much. The moment of truth. Let's not crush these leaves. Look at that. I love it. It's so sweet. Okay, I'm gonna find a place to hang it up after I repot the marantas. So for marantas, in terms of choosing a pot, I actually think they do better in um, like plastic nursery pots because they prefer moisture so much. But I really like the way it looks with terracotta pots, so I'm going to keep it in there like there's uh, the soil they came in with and um, so it's like more uh, moisture retentative and then use my terracotta pot um, but then stay mindful of watering them not letting them dry out too much because there are three of them I have to tease out a little bit of their soil um, as I take them out so when I take them out from the pot you just kind of squeeze around the pot to loosen it and then when you bring it out you kind of like wiggle a little bit because there are roots at the bottom super rooted so when i take out some soil from like the perimeter uh, to make it a smaller pot i just put it on the bottom to fill the pot for the first round um, and then i will do the same thing with the rest of them then i'll try to fit them into the pot Wiggle. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that I have three, all three of them out of the nursery pot, I kind of try to look a little bit how I want to fit them together so they look more um, even. I think if you're like potting multiple plants together, go for like odd numbers. So three, five, um, seven, instead of like even numbers. If you get even number plants, it's harder to fit them together and make them look kind of uh, round and like full and perfect. So I have fitted them in, and then I'm just gonna top the the, the top part with um, a little bit more of their soil. So here's a theory that I have. Um, maybe I'm totally wrong, but I feel like when the plants first come from garden centers, I think there is already systemic inside the soil because how else are they going to keep their plants from being infested with bugs? So I actually think it's um, not as unsafe, like using their soil is not as unsafe as we might think it is. I tend to um, have like nursery plants come to my home and they are pest free and good for a while. And then they'll eventually like if I have pests in my house and they'll get um, pests. Unless, you know, they've been like sitting in the uh, garden center for a really long time and then, you know, that's a different case. But I also think that the soil that comes with the plants will probably have some system systemic uh, pesticide inside of them. 
which is why I also think I probably should use gloves when I handle these soils. Uh, yeah, but that's just kind of what I am guessing. It might be completely untrue. But look how pretty this is. It's so gorgeous. I wonder if I should use it as a hanging pot too. You know what? I changed my mind. Remember I said that the marenta is really like needs a little bit more water? If I put it in a hanging planter, I just know that I won't be watering it as much as it needs to be watered. So I'm going to keep it somewhere easy for me to water. I'm watering my asparagus fern. Even though it's not a real fern, I find that it can still be quite thirsty. And then I'm going to water some of my calatheas. Um, I want to give it the sky a beautiful, more prettier pot. This doesn't fit. I think I'm just gonna put this into my terracotta pot, actually. Go, wiggle, wiggle. Here we go. Mm -hmm. I think I probably should have given it um, fresher soil. It's been in here for quite a while. Um, but I just got kind of lazy. So I think I will do that maybe when springtime is here. Then I will give it a little, maybe even a bigger pot and fresher soil. But for now, I just kind of, I'm kind of done with it being in its nursery pot. <laughs> it's pretty. Okay, and I have filtered my water, so I'm going to water my calatheas. This is the only plant that I use uh, filter water for. Although when I got my uh, new anthuriums or some, some of the more like uh, fragile ones, I think I will also water with filter water. And then because these guys, the leaves are so big and petal-like, I like to wipe them down because um, they collect dust so easily. And also, you know, wiping the leaves down really helps disturb. If there's any pests, then it just gets disturbed. And I like doing that. This morning, Wolfie is watching his morning show right now. And then we're going to go to his gymnastics. He, last week I took him to his gymnastics. He was so excited about it, but I actually got the day wrong. The semester starts January 4th. So then I thought his class starts at January 4th, but his class starts on a Monday, like the week after. So we were lining up, lining up until I found out that I got um, the wrong date. But anyways, Wolfie was so upset. So I called the gymnastics place and asked if they will be willing to let us do a drop-in. So we waited a little bit longer and then he got an extra class in. Uh, so today is actually like um, for real, his like first class <laughs> starting. And yeah, he has so much fun last week that he is super excited about today's class. Dun, 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 dun. Have I gotten anyone, everyone? So like, I finally see a little leaf, new new growth poking out. It's been a while since this guy has put out any new, new leaves. So I'm really excited about that. I love this plant so much. It's looking a little bit wilty at the moment. I feel like I have filmed this entire plant chore video in the kitchen. Um, this is, uh, these two calatheas, I have had them for a while now and they are, have been sitting in their nursery pots and I kind of want to put them in a prettier pot so I could enjoy them even more. So this one I'm going to put in my terracotta pot that my friend made for me. Um, her Instagram tag is everyday inspired. Um, I really adore this pot. So beautiful. And then look at this gorgeous new leaf. It's so beautiful. Anyway, so I think one of them I'll put in this pot and then the other one I'll put in this pot. Mm -hmm. 
And then like, I'll just use its original soil, which I think it probably likes. And then I have my kind of really like chunky, everything thrown in mix that I have. And I'm just putting it to like fill in the pot so that it's not super loosey goosey in here. So cute, almost like a little coconut tree. <laughs> That's that one. And then this one. Let's see. La, 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 la. I'm going to put some of the top soil on the bottom. And then put her in. So I just rinse the pot because there's like some dirty soil around. And then water it in with my filter water. Just a little bit because I recently have um, watered that plant already. So the soil is already pretty saturated. We don't need a lot, but I just kind of want to water it a little bit in to like settle everything. I guess I should have done that before I rinse the pot. But yeah, I just rinse around because I don't, remember I don't like to use um, tap water for my calatheas. There you go. I think these guys look so good. Mm. Okay, I gotta go play Play-Doh with Wolfgang now. We took a kind of an impromptu garden center um, visit to Garden Works and I picked up a couple plants. And I want to, this is a plant that I had before, but I didn't have good success. So this time I think I'm going to try growing it in my grow tent and see if it'll respond better. And this is the string of turtle. Um, I think it's Peperomia prostrata. I think it's so adorable. And I love like when it comes from the garden center, it's so full on the top, but I just wasn't able to grow them well. I don't know what the problem was. I was giving it pretty high humidity and light. Anyway, so I'm gonna try this again, but I also thought this guy would look so cute in the macrame that I got from Mrs. Peach's Handmade. And she sent these for me to try and to show you guys. And uh, she actually also gave me a, a discount code for my, for my subscribers. So I just, she wrote me such a sweet letter and I kind of just want to read it for you guys if you don't mind. Um, it says, Dear Amy, thank you for this collaboration opportunity. Your channel is one of my favorite YouTube channels for almost all things plants related. I like to use this opportunity to introduce my shop briefly and provide you with some more information regarding the products included along with this parcel. My Etsy shop, Mrs. Peaches Handmade, sells macrame decor, decor, decor items made with 100% cotton cords, as a plant parent myself, I think plants are like us with their unique personalities and individual charm. Their hangers should reflect that. When I couldn't find the styles that I was looking for, I started making my own. And that's how it all started. Currently, the shop focuses on selling plant hangers in a variety of colors and styles. All items are designed and made by me. For buyers who are in search of a plant hanger or wall Decor, decor pieces that are not that are not been sold in the store. I also offer custom order services. As for now, I offer shipping within Canada and the U.S. for all the plant hangers. Along with this letter, I have included three macrame plant hangers, two of which are 3 mm millimeter thick cords. The other one is made with four millimeter thick cords. The rainbow charm, I love it. It's so cute. Um, is part of the small accessories that I also sell in the shop, which can be used as a bag charm, a car mirror charm, or wh wherever you see fit. For the viewers of your channel, I've created a coupon that offers 10% off just for them. This code can be applied to all plant hangers and wall decor, decor, <laughs> decor pieces. I look forward to seeing them been put up in your home with your lovely plants. Happy New Year and stay safe. Oh, aw. So the call, coupon call is Wolfgang's Mama and it can be applied during checkout. 
Um, yeah, I, um, I normally wouldn't do this, but I feel like I have such a connection with M Mrs. Peach. Um, I just really like when I've got her parcel, it was so beautifully wrapped as you guys have seen. And I just, I could feel like the love and care behind what she's doing. And even though she just kind of told me like, all I need to do is just briefly showcase like her products. I kind of really want to give her the, the time on this video to like introduce her because yeah, I feel like I just haven't gotten something that actually warm, warms my heart. It was a really unique experience. And I feel like you will know if you buy something from her that, that warmth and like care is really apparent. Anyways, so that's my little spiel. Um, this is the third one and I want to try it on my, on this um, Peperomia, the string of turtles. I don't think this will pop, I probably shouldn't keep this in the grow tank because the humidity is so high and it will probably damage this guy. But I just kind of want to uh, try it out, look how it, see how it looks, and then I will probably switch it up so that it doesn't get damaged. This is the ring on the top, and this is, this um, macrame is kind of matching my sweater, hey? Oh my goodness, guys. How adorable is that? I love it so much. Maybe it'll be okay in the grow tent for a little bit. Whoops, a little turtle. It's so adorable. Oh, I also want to show you guys another thing that I got today from the garden center. Oh, I got another fern. I'm definitely just going to keep this in my exoterra so there's enough humidity. But this fern, when if the new leaves comes out, is this like reddish color. It's so adorable. And my plant, it's in a pot right now. I just potted it. But my plan is like once I have my exoterra, my like terrarium set up, I'm going to put this in there. So cute. All right, I'm going to go hang this up. A little bit tucked in the corner. Um, so I don't really get to enjoy the macrame as much as I would like to. But I'm going to keep it there for now. And um, yeah, I think I'm, I will take it out um, in a little bit so that the wood doesn't get damaged in this like high humidity spot. All right, guys, I think I'm going to end the video here. I, it's, I hope it doesn't come off too chaotic because I've been like filming clips here and there. Um, yeah, I just kind of figure I want to show you guys a little bit more of like behind the scenes of how what I do to take care of my plants. And my filming style has always been like whatever is the easiest for me to do. So then I could do it in the shortest amount of time, like the time that I I have available to me. Um, so like filming vlogs and plant chores, it just takes a little bit more effort of having to bring the camera around with me. Um, and sometimes I just, I don't want to be distracted when I'm with Wolfie and I kind of want to just focus on him. So it's harder to incorporate this into my life, but I do want to expand a little bit, like try out uh, different filming styles. I am actually taking a little like 30 day filming course by um, Casey Ni Neistat. Uh, it's a gift from my husband for cr Christmas as well. Um, and we just started the class and I'm really enjoying it. I really do want to like be a little bit more creative in this like uh, expression, this like filming um, medium. Anyways. That's all for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will see you guys again. Bye.